Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sanjana and this week I'm going to show you how to make the legendary Besan Barfi. If you've never made Indian sweets before, then this is an excellent starting point for your journey into the world of Indian sweet making because it is so simple and easy to prepare and you need only a handful of ingredients. The thing that excites me the most about this Besan Barfi recipe is that it can so easily be veganized should you wish to make a completely dairy-free version. And this is quite elusive in the world of Indian sweet making because so many of these dishes are prepared with ghee, milk or milk powder um, and cream and it's really difficult sometimes to avoid these ingredients since the process of making Indian sweets is actually very technical, similar to baking. If you're ready, let's begin. Before we start cooking our besan barfi, it's always a good idea to begin by lining the tin. You can use a regular cake tin, tray baked tin or thali. I'm using a tray baked tin with a removable bottom. Line the base of the tin with a piece of baking parchment and then scatter over some sliced pistachios. For the besan barfi, place gram flour or besan in a non-stick pan. When you buy it from the shops, gram flour can sometimes be a little bit lumpy. If this is the case for yours, then you can always sieve it prior to using. Next, add in some ghee. If you'd like to make a completely vegan version of this besan barfi without compromising on the results, then simply replace the ghee with coconut oil. You can use unrefined coconut oil if you'd like your barfi to have the flavour of coconut. If you don't really like the coconutty flavour, then simply use a refined coconut oil. Throughout this cooking process, you'll want to keep the pan over a very low heat. Now start mixing the ghee and gram flour mixture together. This mixture will at first look dry and sandy, and you'll probably think that it's never going to come together, but I promise you it will. Continue to mix over a low heat for about 10 to 12 minutes, and do not stop stirring the mixture at any point. If you do, you run the risk of burning it. Toasting the gram flour is the most important step of making any besan barfi and builds the flavour foundations. It needs to be golden brown and nutty like smooth peanut butter. I like to think that your besan barfi is only as good as the level of toasting it gets. While you're toasting the besan, it will undergo a lot of different physical changes. You'll see it transform from sandy to doughy. At some point in between, it'll start to look like children's kinetic play sand. This is before it turns into a grainy paste, just like this. Once it turns smooth and a shade darker, you're really going to notice the glossiness of the key. Once the mixture is glossy, smooth and pinkish brown in colour, like smooth peanut butter, remove it from the heat. Set this aside to cool for about 15 to 20 minutes. It's now time to make the sugar syrup. First, you'll need some granulated sugar. Pop it into a small saucepan. Now pour in some water and a drop or two of lime or lemon juice. The acidity in the citrus will stop sugar crystals from forming. Give this a brief mix and then switch on the heat. Keep this over a medium heat and once it starts boiling, don't stir it anymore. You can swirl the pan around a little if you need to. The sugar syrup needs to be boiled over a medium heat for about four to five minutes. For complete accuracy, I like to use a cooking thermometer. The temperature should register 105 degrees Celsius or 221 degrees Fahrenheit. The cooled syrup should form a single short string, breaking when your fingers reach about one centimeter away from one another. Once the sugar syrup is ready, switch the heat off and then add in some ground cardamom. Additionally, you can also add in some yellow or orange food colour, should you wish to. The tiniest pinch of salt will help these flavours come to life. Give the sugar syrup a good stir and then allow it to cool down for about 5 minutes. If you like, you can also add in a pinch of saffron at this stage, but I think that this barfi is best enjoyed in the simplest way. My besan mixture has cooled for about 20 minutes here. It's still quite warm, but not hot. Once both mixtures have cooled down a little, mix them together. Stir this gently but thoroughly using either a wooden spoon or a silicon spatula. Try not to overmix it since this can cause the mixture to seize up. 
At this point, if your bis and barfi becomes dry and crumbly, it means that either the sugar syrup was overcooked or the flour and syrup mixture didn't cool adequately before you mixed the two. To fix it, simply add a splash of water to the overcooked mixture, stir well and cook again until you can roll a tiny piece into a ball between your fingers. Once the barfi mixture looks smooth and homogenous, just like this, it's ready to pour into the pan. Smooth out the top and then give it a little rasp on your worktop to remove any air bubbles and to flatten it out completely. Allow this to set at room temperature for 3-4 to four hours. Once it's set, you can use a small paring knife to loosen the edges first. If you don't have a tin like this, you can always loosen the edges and then flip it out onto a platter. Just like this. Carefully peel off the baking parchment to reveal your smooth pistachio studded besan barfi. Cut your delicious creamy besan barfi into pieces as big or as small as your heart desires. This perfect besan barfi is a meltingly soft and creamy Indian sweet with roasted gram flour, sugar and nuts. This is an entirely foolproof recipe that delivers amazing results every time. Good besan barfi should always snap softly when you break it in half. Tap the link in the description box for a full list of ingredients and measurements you need to make this recipe. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, then please do consider subscribing. Your support is what sustains this channel and what keeps those delicious recipes coming.